Next on MLR Weekly, Seattle Seawolves star Dan Creel. The best recap in Major League Rugby. Rugby Morning's Coffee Break with MLR Headlines. And Brian Ray of America's Rugby News with previews and opinion. Rugby Wrap-Ups MLR Weekly brought to you by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig & Whistle, New York City. The world's best rugby pub. And Lean and & Limber. Stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Presented by Rugby Wrap-Up, Matt McCarthy in New York City. Thank you for joining us. Good to see you. We have a great show. We have Seattle Seawolves star Dan Creel. The best recap in Major League Rugby. And Brian Ray of America's Rugby News with previews and opinion. But before we get to anything, we have our recurring segment, Rugby Morning's Coffee Break with MLR News and Headlines with John Fitzpatrick. John, how are you and what do you got for us? Hey, Matt, it's so good to see you. And it's also good to see that your hair is dry after a wet weekend at the CRCs. Oh, snap, a ball joke. Haven't heard one of those in six seconds. But yes, you're right. The CRC 7s was spectacular. And they were able to navigate, no pun intended, a monsoon and pull off the best college rugby event I have been involved with. This Saturday at the soccer plex, this is where every rugby event should be. Next! Man, I want to start this segment off with a trivia question. What was the final score of the lowest scoring game in MLR history, and when did it take place? I would have to say it was the uh, nine inning, uh, nine innings pitch shutout, eight nothing final score, the Flapjackals over the Iron Workers this weekend. Well done, Matt. You're one for one on trivia, and we have more. What's and I might on? add, I might add that these trivia questions are courtesy of Sheehy Auto Stores and their pop quiz. It's easy at Sheehy, and this another one is an easy one. The longest winning streak in MLR history, continuous winning streak. I'd have to give it to the 10 games to the, the aforementioned Flapjackals. That is correct. Ding, ding, ding. San Diego Legion in round 11, they won their seventh straight game. So Matt, I got to ask you, do you feel like the San Diego Legion can win 11 straight games? They can, but I don't think they will. I don't think they're going to prioritize that over player management, which is something you have to do in this league. Next! I want to move on to some player moves. In case you missed it over the weekend, this happened pretty quickly. The Houston Sabercats signed USA Men's Eagle Hooker and prop Joe Taufatee, and he immediately was inserted into the lineup. Scored a try on his debut with Houston. Unfortunately, Houston did come up a little bit short. But Matt, i got to ask you a question. Do you think Big Joe is going to stick around in MLR for another season or two? I hope so. He's one of my favorite people on and off the pitch. Uh, Big Joe T, and uh, he's a an asset to any organization on and off the pitch as well. So we hope we stay. he stays, but he's very good, so somebody overseas is probably going to come knocking. Next! Hey, Matt, how about a fun fact for you? Courtesy of MLR Stats guru James Dealey, Seattle Seawolves number 8, Reichert Hattie, scored a hat trick against Dallas in that 61-19 win to take his 2023 MLR season tally up to 11 tries, top of the league, right? And in, the, and in that moment, he surpassed New York Iron Workers hooker Dylan Fawcett as the league's all-time leading try scorer. Hattie has 38 tries, Fawcett has 36 tries. Who will be the first one to 40, Matt? Well, I can tell you who it's not going to be. It's not going to be Matt in Trueville. And I also would say that two things that you missed was it could be a had trick for Ricky, and you said iron workers as though you were a dock worker from the 1950s. Next! I'm a good old Maryland boy, what can I say? Four more players got their 50 caps in round one. There were four of them, let's say them. Nate Osberger, he's got 50. Charlie Hewitt, 50. Matt Harmon, he's at 50. And Kenny Nasakege. 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 Excellent. All great players. Again, no easy feat in a professional rugby setup. Well done, gentlemen. Matt, that's all I got. I'm excited. We've got 
Seven weeks left in the regular season. The playoff stretch is only just heating up in the Eastern and Western Conference. It's going to be fun to watch. Final thoughts, John? You know what is easy? Buying a car from Sheehy Auto. Oh, and on that note, we're going to bid Mr. Fitzpatrick farewell for now. Thank you, John. All right, don't go away because we have our recap of all the action. Before we look ahead, we're going to look back right now. Playing in Seattle's Pacific Northwest at Starfire Stadium was a daunting task for the Dallas Jackals, but the team from the Lone Star State has shown moxie in some heartbreaking losses, and the invincible Seawolves were nursing some injuries. You cannot, however, get pinged for 18 penalties and two yellow cards and expect to win in that hostile environment. Nor can you succeed if you are dominated in the scrums and lineouts. Indeed, Riekert Hatting had the had trick trademark, while arguably the most unsung star in Major League Rugby, Dan Creel, had two tries and 155 meters rushing. What that is in yards, I have no idea. But that's a big reason why he's on today's show. Rumor has it, even Rucky scored in an absolute hiding as the Seawolves topped the Jackals 61 to 19. The Toronto Arrows flew into the gold mine on airline looking to knock off an Eastern Conference foe in the NOLA gold. And the match was pretty statistically even other than two key numbers. Toronto was forced to make 199 tackles and they only had three tries to the home team's six. New Orleans gets a big bonus point win. In Quincy, Massachusetts, the New England Free Jacks were hosting their arch rivals from New York and scored the first try but five minutes into the match. But no one would have guessed that would be the only try on the day and the only other points would be a penalty goal. The Iron Workers could not take advantage of a Free Jacks yellow card and got called for 13 penalties of their own and were forced to make 205 tackles. Ouch. Despite a yeoman's effort, the New Yorkers got no points in an 8-0 loss, and New England survives another tight one. At post-snap Dragon Stadium in San Diego, the Legion and Houston Sabercats hooked up in a much-anticipated Western Conference battle. One would think that conceding 20 penalties on your home turf would spell doom, but a dominance in the lineout and try column propelled San Diego and let them ultimately pull away with a bonus point victory. Despite the game being closer than the score, the Sabercats failed to claw away with any points in a pivotal battle. All right, before I lose my voice entirely, let's take a break, I'll get it back, and we'll bring in Dan Creel of the Seattle Seawolves after this. I can't take no loss, I don't need know what it costs. Selling or trading in your vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. With Easy Trade, start online or visit us in store. We want your vehicle, and we'll give you up to 125% of KBB value. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we actually come back from our commercial break, let's check in with Crazy Pat Holney, Chicago Hounds fan. All right, Chicago super fan here, Patrick Holney, just to let you know, people, what's going on with this season? Well, I'll tell you, this is what's going on. Number one, the weather's been crap here in Chicago, but things are looking up. Next week, we're going to be in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, Chicago, that's right. And you know what? How about these refs? They're messing up my boys here, and, and they're not gelling together because of these refs. So that's the number two excuse. But the second part of the season, the Chicago Hounds are going to be singing a different song. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. And the opponents are going to be singing, crying all the time. Because the Hounds are going to rock. Let's hit the weights, mates, and get into it. You got to love Crazy Pat Holney and his passion for his Chicago Hounds. With that, let's bring in 
our Seattle Seawolves superstar, Mr. Dan Creel. Dan, good to see you. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, it's been a while, but good to be on you. Yeah, full disclosure, uh, we did have the opportunity to spend some quality time on team owner Adrian Balfour's farm, where you work in the off season. Yeah, that's correct. I remember that last year. It was a good time during the summer. So, yeah, I'm just super grateful to be on the show finally. And sorry it's taken this long, but um, yeah, I mean, we appreciate all the work that you're doing. Well, I, I appreciate with all the work that you're doing. And but b- before we get to that, I just want to point out what you do on his. You're actually a farmer. That's correct. From a farming background in South Africa, my wife's family had a big sugar cane and poultry farm. Um, and yeah, I've grown up in farms all my life. So, And you're there with your teammate, scrum half, Mr. J.P. Smith. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, what you don't understand is these guys get up at like 5 a.m. to go work on the farm with the sheep and everything else. And then they, they get some time on the lake. But you've also, we, my wife and I also had the pleasure of meeting your wife, Candace, and your kids. And your wife, Candace, is doing uh, some work with a, a charity called Happy Bundles. Can you tell us about that? Happy Bundles is a, a nonprofit organization that we've registered in South Africa and as well as America. Um, so what we do is we send gifts to children that are fighting cancer, going through uh, their treatments or that are in hospitals or at home. Um, and the reason for that being was Candace was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer in 2020. 2020 and um it was quite moving the amount of children that she saw and you know receiving treatments chemotherapy radiation and having two kids of our own that was uh you know something really close to home and um it just felt right for us to make a difference and uh give these kids a moment of joy in their life so yeah we've got it registered in america and in south africa and it's it's going really well it's good to good to be able to give back that's awesome stuff and how's candace doing She's good, all in remission, and uh, yeah, she's doing really well. Happy Bundles is, like I mentioned, a really special and, and close thing to our hearts. So uh, we just hope that we can we can keep on improving and spoiling as many kids as possible. That's great stuff. That's great stuff. So she'll be able to continue her uh, water skiing career. <laughs> I think she might be. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Where you guys actually physically destroyed me and giggled. Yeah, yeah, we did. But, you know, that's great stuff with the Happy Bundles, and there's the the link for it there, folks, so please check that out. You're a twin. How sick are you of people in interviews bringing up the fact that you are a twin? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all, man. My, my twin and I are really close. We obviously don't get to see each other as much as we'd like. Um, but, yeah, he's he's a really good uncle to, to our two kids. Um, him and Cans are really good friends, too, which helps. Um and, you know, I'm just super proud to be his, his twin. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it really doesn't faze me at all. He's he's done super well in his career over in, in South Africa and Japan. And, um, you know, I've got nothing bad to say about him. And he's Jesse that we're referring to. And he's That's, yeah. he's logging some time with the Springboks now in the centers. All right. So I got to ask, who's better? Oh, it's a tough one. Yeah. Um, I think Jess, Jess, I mean, he's an incredible player. You look at his, you know, his career for the Springboks, for the Blue Bulls, um, at Cannon Eagles in Japan. Um, he's extremely dedicated and hardworking, which, yeah, he, he definitely takes out on compared to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's difficult to say who's better. Um, Let me handle I'm this. His biggest, Let yeah. me handle this, okay? Number one, you're, you've been – You've had a lights out season this year. You have been on fire. Every highlight reel of the Seattle Seawolves this year, you're in it. You're healthy. You're firing on all cylinders. I say you're the better Creel. That's for for my money. For my money right now. He's playing in Japan. He's taking days off. I'll take that. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now, speaking about you, I got a couple of stats that are that pop out. Yeah. Did you know that you're fifth in carries in the league? And no idea. 67 carries, but you're third in meters game. 
So that means you're getting more meters or yards for the American audience. So, folks, let me give you some perspective. He's got a thousand. He's got eleven hundred yards or a, a thousand five meters, which is putting him at sixteen and a half yards a carry or fourteen point nine yards a carry. Imagine an NFL player having sixteen and a half yards per carry, folks, and this is with no blocking. Okay, <laughs> so take a bow, Dad Creel. Guess who's right behind you? in meters gained Duncan Matthews nope same team is though. he ahead of me no he's no no you're uh, you're the you're the the top C Rick, 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 Rick and Hutton no so this this plays into I got a whole thing going on here JP yeah. is right uh, yeah. behind you in fourth <laughs> right so that brings up this competition here. I mean, who's the better farmer? Who's going to have the most meters gained at the end of the year? And then Ricky, Rico Hatting, is leading the league in tries scored. But I'm going to say this. Without you two running the ball all over the pitch, him finishing it off, he'd be nowhere. <laughs> That's a team sport, Matt. That's the beauty of it. It's, oh. uh, that doesn't consist of one individual. It's a whole team, brother. You're good. You are good. You are such a better person than I am. <laughs> and let me let me just put this in another American football perspective, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. This would be like the running backs setting up the tight end for touchdowns. That's what Creel and Smith are doing for Hatting. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and it's because of the farming that makes you guys. That's it. Yeah. That's a big part. That's a big part in it. Steals the steals the wool. Is it steals the wool? No. No. I don't. Steals the soul. <laughs> There's something about wool in there. There's a wool joke in there someplace. Uh, let's get back to you, yep. your career, your life. How do you like living in the USA, and what do you miss most from home? Yeah, we, my family's extremely happy. We we really enjoy it, Matt. Um, and once again, I'm going to say, you know, uh, the ownership and the and the and the team, the Seattle SeaWolves, have been incredible, accommodating, you know, accommodating my family and myself. Um, our kids are currently in school. They're really enjoying it. Um, Seattle, Washington's a beautiful place. Um, things that I do miss about South Africa is number one is definitely the weather. Weather can be a bit <laughs> tricky here throughout throughout the year, but yeah. we managed to we managed to make a plan on that. And uh, um, I'd probably say a lot of the food. Um, you know, you guys call it barbecues here. Yeah, we call it a braai. Um, I really do miss that. All right. As per the Western Conference, it's a very good conference. You have three very good teams. What was your takeaway of the San Diego win over Houston? Other that was a really good win. Um, I think San Diego really found their sort of their groove. They're playing really well as a team together. Um, and I mean, I think that a lot of the audience have seen that as well. They, they beat us at, at Starfire. Um, so they can win at home or away. Um, but yeah, I think just a big statement within the league that they are a force to be reckoned with. And um, yeah, I just, I really look forward to playing them again down in San Diego. Um, there were opportunities that we missed out, but that, you know, that's rugby. You can't always be at your best, I guess. And um, we, we're just really lucky to be able to get another chance to play them. When is your brother coming over to play with you in the back line for the Seawolves? Oh, I wish you could come, Matt. I wish that would be a, a dream come true. But um, you're having you know, a banner season. You can make these contract demands. Balfour, hey, listen, <laughs> no man, I am not playing next year unless my brother's next to me. Oh, no, I wish for you. I wish. But that would be super cool, man. That would be a dream come true. I think we might we might be fueling the, uh, the, the, the fires with this thing and maybe getting that to happen. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, it's been a pretty cool, pretty cool start to the season. You know, we're doing really well. We've obviously played 10 games and won eight out of those 10. Um, and there's just a really good atmosphere in the team. You know, the, the management's been incredible. Alan Clark and, uh, and Nessie. Our owners are incredible. You know, our medical team is fantastic. So it's just a really easy environment to, to sort of be at your best week in, week out. So um, just praise to everyone at the Seawolves. All right, my friend. I really appreciate you taking the time out. Great talking to you. I can't wait to hook up with you again. Mr. Dan Creel from the Seattle Seawolves. We'll be right back. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. This is the Rugby Odds, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith 
a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained? We are back, and we are with Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News, who's back once again to offer his opinions and predictions. Brian, how are you? I'm just terrific. What a fine weekend of rugby we had in the major league rugby. Yeah, so you got a lot going on. You, you want to explain what's going on there with your choices? Well, San Diego are the top team in major league rugby, so this is a sign of respect for them at the very top here. So, of course, New England beat your beloved New York, and... Um, over here, we've got Becky Foss, uh, the lovely artist who designed this terrific Alligator City jersey for Nola Gold over the weekend. So there's our model, Dougie Fife, uh, sporting that one. And they, of course, soundly beat uh, my Toronto Arrows. Anyway, we've got another four-game weekend ahead of us. And it starts off with the Chicago Hounds going into Atlanta. Do you know, I think that... that bye week might help Chicago a little bit more just tighten up you know we've, we've seen them kind of be a little bit messy in their their attacking schemes a bit so this might have helped them, especially with the new names they've got in of course Cam Dodson we've got uh, Justice and Kambu a couple uh big forwards so certainly be interesting looking to see a little bit more from them um you know we'll see how healthy they are in the front row as well I'm gonna pick Chicago in an upset just a gut feeling really the next one up, Old Glory, coming off a bye and going into Dallas. Yeah, that was a bad game uh, for Dallas against Seattle. It did not work out. Their defense was terrible. Uh, they, they were just aligned wrong. I mean, first phase, Seattle's breaking through at will. Dan Creel is just running all over. Um, Having yeah. a great season, Dan Creel. Yeah, he's, he was absolutely – that was his best game of the season, maybe. Uh, i got to go with Old Glory, uh, D.C., in this one. Uh, I think it'll be a fun game. I'm expecting a better performance from Dallas. Let's hope so um, from a spectator standpoint. This could be an entertaining one. All right, San Diego going into Utah. San Diego, geez. Uh, that game against Houston on the weekend, that was a real test from the Sabercats. That's what we expected. Uh, it was still in the balance till about the 70th minute, which was great. Um, you know, Houston did kind of put down a little bit of a blueprint of, of how to, you know, at, at least put pressure on these guys. They really took it too up front. That's not really the game that Utah plays, though. They play a game far more similar to San Diego. So, I mean, this one, you know, looking at the two, you'd have to think as long as the weather is good, this is going to be a free-for-all. Just, you know, <laughs> the guy's throwing the ball spin to win all, uh, all game, which is kind of the, how those two sides like to play. I, I got to go San Diego. They're the hot team at the moment. I mean, best team in, in MLR. And until somebody, you know, they've they redeemed themselves, that loss to, to Houston. So uh, until someone else figures them out, I think you got to go with them. The final match of the weekend is the biggest one, New Orleans coming into New York. I mean, if if New York loses this, that could be all she wrote in this playoff hunt. I mean, we're getting to that nah. point where you can't be uh, too far behind. I don't know. I'm I'm looking at this. These big inter, you know, the Eastern Conference, the ones in your own in your own conference, especially against Nola, who are in that. Those are one of the teams you're competing against. I think you've got to win that game at home against uh, New Orleans. I think their chances go way down if they lose this one. So I think there's more pressure on New York. I'll go with. Uh, with Nola on the road, but I'm not super confident with that pick. I think this is going to be a close game. If the season ended and we got through to the final and it was San Diego versus New England, who wins? I mean, on form, I think you got to go with San Diego, don't you? I mean, they just seem to be able to score so quickly. I mean, their defense, the thing is they're, they're soaking up teams in defense. They're playing really hard on their line. They're making teams work for points. But when they get a crack, they're gone. I mean, they take their opportunities so quickly. and They're so dangerous on offense. So I think you got to go with the hot team. And San Diego are the hot team at the moment. Well, it's so. not exactly – New England's not exactly cold. No, that's true. That's true. But I just think San Diego's attacking game is just outrageously good right now. And, uh, I mean, guys like Nate Augsburg are playing out of their skin. So – you have that kind of uh, you know team chemistry going on, and, and just the 
the, the standard of performance, I gotta go with San Diego right now, but it would be a heck of a game. And it doesn't matter, you know, who's You know, we're both gonna get there. phone calls from <laughs> Seattle Seawolves <laughs> owner Adrian Balfour. You know, I'm surprised the phone's, I'm surprised he's not even tapped listening to this taping, tapped in and, and gonna call immediately. But yeah, no, it's that's what the great part about this whole league is, is this now we have real competition between teams and maybe the, uh, Maybe the salary cap thing isn't what it what it was, right? In terms of impacting teams in the competition, but uh, I, I'm I'm loving it. I know certain fans are chewing their fingernails down to the quick, but it's it's great to have this kind of competition on American soil. Yeah, looking forward to this, and you know, kind of in the background of all this, um, you know, the Collegiate Rugby Shield is, is looking for some some players to apply. They're kind of putting together that uh, you know. Uh, that great showpiece for for those athletes, collegiate athletes who are looking to, to put their name up for the the MLR draft. So that's kind of in the background. And you were at you know watching some some CRC you know rugby this past weekend. So let's not forget that you know this next level of American talent. There you go is is coming up in behind. And I hope they're enjoying this season and, and looking at it and saying you know I'd like to play in this one day and uh, you know are, are maybe thinking of putting themselves up for this collegiate rugby shield and certainly for the draft and. Uh, you know, I, I just have that in the background thinking, what's the next, uh, you know, what's the next group of, of, of great talent, the Sam Gollins, who are going to come through in this year's draft? Well, I'll tell you what, man, I, I, I was at this event. Uh, I was actually working it. This was a spectacular event. And this facility, the Mer Maryland Soccerplex, is absolutely perfect for any and all rugby events. It's got 12 fields. They're all Bermuda grass, perfectly pristine fields the stadium the main stadium is just perfect absolutely perfect there's beer tents there's all kinds of stuff going on it's got parking the hotels are near, nearby it's gaithersburg maryland they've redeveloped the whole town and the surrounding area i think the state came in here and did something that's a, that's i was getting bits and pieces of stuff but for a rugby event of any kind this place is awesome and we had monsoon biblical rains of biblical proportions on Thursday night in all day Friday and then Saturday was act was sunny the gods shined down it was spectacular the fans were there packed party going on great rugby and then on Sunday we got rain again but they still managed to get 92 percent of all the matches in and we didn't have to stop playing until 420 on Friday, which was just miraculous. And it's because these fields are unbelievable. It's all Bermuda, Bermuda grass and they drain. They drain. It was, it was, it was remarkable. I'm just, uh, I can't say enough about it. And on that Saturday, between the two days of pouring rain, we had a perfect day, the big day, and it couldn't have been better. It was one of the best rugby events I've ever been at. Well, more of those and we'll be in good shape heading towards 2031. Indeed, indeed. All right, on that note, we are out of time. Thank you to Mr. Brian Ray of America's Rugby News. Thank you to John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning. Thank you to Dan Creel of the Seattle Seawolves. And thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other shows, including The Rugby Odds, The College Rugby Wrap-Up. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Sign up for our weekly newsletter. We don't bite. And please join our American Red Cross blood donor team.